Hello, hello from Creativation. This is Lolly at the WOW Embossing Powders booth. I'm here with Seth Apter and he is going to demo some of his new products. Hey gang, I'm going to be looking at the camera, looking at my art, and also looking at the other people that are that here. That is good. I want to demo to everybody. So we are, as Lolly said, at Creativation 2020. That's in Phoenix. That's the crazy crate trade show where all of us come out with new products that you feel like you have to buy and then go broke. And as soon as you do, we come out with more. Um, Amen. You, can, you can thank us anytime you like. So I'm now working with WOW. I have a new release of two trios of embossing powders plus a special mixed media embossing brush. I'm just going to show you guys and you guys in uh, the I've studio audience at home. Go ahead. <laughs> so, so we have um, the trios. The first trio is metals. Um, it's weathered gold, etched platinum, and crusty copper. These are a little bit of dirty metals. They're kind of mixed media metals. There's multiple uh, crystals in them, so it does some interesting things. The second set is cosmic, <laughs> inspired by the sky and the cosmos. It's blue moon, sea of tranquility, and space dust. I think that's my favorite of the bunch, but please don't tell the others. But what you really need to do is you need to feel them because they feel differently than, than most embossing powders. So they have a kind of a, a, a rough and gritty surface. Um, they're flat, so it's not like they're full-on textured, but they're, um, they're a little different. And because of the different kinds of powders in them, there's some black in it, there's some translucent in it, you get a little bit of different effects with each pour. But this is pretty much what you get. So I'm going to just work the way I always work and create a piece. And the way I'm going to start is actually by using some paint. So I'm using some paper artsy paint, it's chalk paint. You can create a background really with any with any paint, but this obviously is the best. I'm going to try to find my baby wipes. I might have hit them. <laughs> Which Tea probably left. means I have to Tea go left. in the bath. Not in the bath. I have to go into the garbage. <laughs> it's full of the glitter left, too. To the left. Left. So oh, to the left. To the left. To oh, the okay. Left. We like hiding Seth's supplies, so. Everything we own in a box to the left. Yeah, they like hiding my supplies and seeing how I react. <laughs> he's mellow about it. By the way, spin it over there so you can actually see the brains and the beauty behind. The, the, wow. these, are the, these are the baby wipe stealers right there. <laughs> They're the ones who steal the baby wipes. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go in. I'm going to go in with some of these beautiful colors and go in the way I always go in. I'm going to go in and do a little mixing. Um, normally I use a paintbrush, but I'm just going to go with a baby wipe out of ease. And so I can use up your baby wipes. I'm going to just put a little bit of one color on, and a little bit goes a long way, and a little bit of another color. Um, what was that old commercial, a little dabble do ya? A little dabble do ya, yeah, Brill Cream. I don't need that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Love that so I'm just going to go and I'm going to spread it around. I'm going to get some pretty good coverage. I'm okay if a little bit of white shows here and there. But mostly I do want that background just to be full. And I could keep rubbing if I wanted to soften it. Or also rubbing it with the baby wipe. You're going to see what happens. You kind of pull back to the white. Mm -hmm. And I like that look because I feel like it's a little bit more mixed media. I don't want anything smooth and even. I just like it kind of variable and... Um, kind of my own. I don't want my painted background to look like anyone else's. And can I use this? <laughs> okay. I'm just going to dry it a little bit. It's chalk paint. It dries quite fast. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back in with the heavy cream. Um, uh, as a, uh, an aside, this is one of my new colors from Paper Artsy. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm, what I'm going to do is just put a very little bit right at the edges. I love a border. I'm a sucker for a border. What it does is it tells people what's inside is kind of important. Look at me. Like we will frame something on our wall. And then also it highlights what's inside. So I'm just going to blend this out quite significantly. I don't want it strong. I want it kind of soft just so there's that variation. Yeah, so that's just, just gives you a little bit of a sense of that. And I'm gonna call it a day. Normally I work in many, many more layers, but we wanna get to the star of the show, which is the embossing powder. So um, 
we could go in lots of different directions here, and the direction I'm going to start with is by staying in the same color palette. So if you just move the camera and show everybody that, I'm going to dig deep and get a couple stamps. You can see that really well there. And it's air drying too as we speak, so. Sure. He's looking in his stash to get out some more stamps here. So yeah, while he's doing that, I'm going to get a little close-up on these bossing powders. Probably in about two years, if you're at home watching, you could stick your hand in the computer and feel them. Okay. But I think that's probably a couple years away. But if you get really close, you can kind of hear the grit. Yeah, if you have a nail. Yeah, even though it's smooth, it's just, right. It's, you can it's, still it's not bumpy. Still hear it's it. not. It's not. You know, the full-on texture, but it's really interesting. It's also a little bit matte, a little bit shiny. Yeah. Um, so a little bit different than a traditional embossing powder. Okay. All right. So I just got a couple of stamps, and I'm choosing background stamps just to add a little texture and grunge and interest. And I'm going to use the embossing pad. Uh, I don't know if you guys have used this one. This is the juiciest one in the business. There's just no question about it. And I used it in my class that I took from Seth after. It is a really good pad. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good pad. Which makes um, you say, wow. Well, everything makes you say, wow. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink one of these stamps. And then it's unmounted. And I'm going to go in and I'm just going to use it to add some interest. So I don't know how it's going to look because we all know you can't really see. You know, you might be able to see a little bit with the shine. I'm just going to go in. I'm working mostly at the edges. And then I'm going to add a little bit in, on the inside, but it's, you know, it's hit or miss with what you get. You just have to be uh, confident and brave, which is really what you need to do with mixed media, period. So I'm going to go in again. I'm going to add a little bit of, of these two. More is more, so why stop with one? And then I'm going to cap it, always important. And then I'm going to pour some powder. And I'm gonna, again, I'm going with the monochromatic look for the background, so I'm using the Sea of Tranquility. When I open that, I want you to see what it looks like. It's got a lot of different crystals in it. You see some that are uh, the greenish color, some that are black. You see some really shiny things. I wanna show you over here so you guys who are actually here can see. Um, and so it's what's really important is to just close it and shake it. You want it mixed. And then I'm gonna just pour it at the top. I like to do what I call the waterfall and then just tip it. I just think that's more magic. Okay. So that's my random background. So I'm going to give you a little hint. Although people who have embossed for all their lives, like most of us, probably know all these things already. So let's say I go in there and I'm unhappy with it because there's too much. Everybody knows that embossing powder is a little unforgiving once it's melted. You just can't do anything about it. So let's just say I think, wow, that's really heavy. I'm gonna go in right now and I'm gonna just pounce out a little bit with this brush and lighten it up. Once it's melted, you can't do that. So if I feel like there's too much or an area I don't like or it's too linear, I'm just gonna take it out. If there's something I didn't like completely, I could just brush it right off. If you're using a stamp, that's very, very fine detail. What I do is I go, let's say a word stamp, and your letter E looks like an O. I go in with an awl, pokey tool, a needle, and I'll just literally go in and take it out. Because for me, a background like this, if it's a big hot mess, it's better. But if I'm using a word, I want people to be able to read the word. So I always know go in first. So I'm gonna save that little bit, because we know this is all treasure. You don't want to lose any of it. And even though these jars seem so tiny, we all know it lasts for a lifetime. Not so good for sales, but good for you. <laughs> and then I'm going to look for a heat tool. Voila. Show us how to hold that appropriately. Okay, two things about this. First of all, this is the WOW heat tool, if you didn't guess. Um, it's a dual speed, which is great, because sometimes you do need to, to be cautious. But I'm a very impatient artist, so I just like to hit the high and go to town. But you'll see that there's vents at the base. And what will happen is if you hold the tool like that, which a lot of us do, you're going to cover the vents. You're not going to let the heat escape. And that metal tip in there is going to get so hot that you're literally going to be able to watch the plastic safety casing melt. 
So you want to make sure you hold it here. It's got a waist, right? John Legend would be happy about this. Loves its curves. Don't so hold the hips, you wanna, hold the waist. Yeah, you want to hold it by the waist. It's not always natural, but once you do it a bit, you get used to it. So I'm going to start low and then immediately go to high. And we're going to see this melt. Can you see okay over there? Okay. And there it's, you can start seeing the melt. I also love the fact that when your paper curls, very often when you hit it with a heat tool, the, uh, it starts to actually uncurl and flatten. You know, I hate with a video when it takes a little while, but you guys can run to the bathroom and get some popcorn. She's on Facebook, so yeah, no worries. <laughs> All right, so this is what we got. And if you see it catch the light, you can see yes, the little bit of the sheen Excellent. in there. So I want you guys to see a close up. So I really love the mono, um, the mono tone. Uh, um, so I, I go one of two directions. My, my <coughs> favorite direction, hey, welcome Hi, back, girl. is this I, is, is staying in the same tones. You can't go wrong. People struggle sometimes with color. Um, you just can't go wrong. Sometimes you like contrast, but this one I want to go soft. sort of grungy, soft, and, but elegant, a little elegant. And elegant's not a word I usually use um, for me, but I, I think with these soft tones you get a little elegant. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to um, get another strip of paper and I'm going to, um, I'm really uh, just winging it here, people. This reminds me of a vintage book cover. Ooh, I'll take it. I'm looking for something that um, I can use to tear this, like um, with a hard edge. How about this? Okay. How about one of these? Like theoretically a ruler? Oh, this is good, yeah. It's rounded, but I think it'll help. I think so it'll... the other way up, Seth, because it's got feet on the other side. Thank you. So what I'm going to do is I, I want I want a little bit of um, deckle. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to do that. Whoops. And what I'm going to do is, like I always do, is not worry if I cover a lot of what I do. In mixed media, you, you should never get attached. If you love it after the first layer, don't stop. Keep going. So I'm going to use this and I'm going to use this as an attachment and I'm going to um, just cover some of what I've done. So I need a little bit more paint. So I think I'm going to continue to go soft. So I'm going to use the Globe Thistle and the Heavy Cream. Ooh. I'm going to flip this over and do the same thing I did earlier. I'm going to add a little... And you can see okay? This stuff isn't blocking? Okay. Um, and add a little bit of that. Get my one baby wipe that I've been assigned for the show. <laughs> for the week, yeah. And do a little mixing. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go a little heavier with the, with this color. Um, yeah, that's nicer. And then I am going to then push it back um, and get back to some of the lighter white. I like that. Yeah. And then I'm going to just add a little bit of, of the heavy cream, just like I did at the edges of the other piece. So if you weren't here before, just the idea behind that is to add a little bit of softness around the edge, nicely blended, but just to get a little bit of frame. We're still pretty soft there, right? Hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick with this idea of this sort of soft, elegant grunge, and I'm going to go to platinum, uh, etch platinum. So that's that one. I think that will really keep the tones quite, quite soft and nice. But I got to get some a little grit in there. So I'm going to use um, one of my border stamps. These are, to me, pretty mixed media-ish. I, I don't know that anyone would describe these as elegant. Um, so I'm going to use that one. Yeah. 
and it'll be a little bit of a contrast. It will have some strength to it because it's a pretty strong circle stamp. Um, I normally, for something like this, would use a block, but I don't think I have a block large enough. So um, we're just going to wing it and be okay with that. Kind of miss. Yeah, I don't know. No, that's okay. Not long enough. I'm I'm fine with winging it. it. Doesn't nothing ever has to be perfect. Perfect is overrated. And then I'm going to do it maybe a little bit off center. And then I'm gonna just hold it so it doesn't move. And I'll use this as something to just give some even pressure to. And now we'll see what happens. Shake it up. Do that waterfall. Let's see if we get some nice grungy circles. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I see that and I like that, but more is more, people. So let's just add this again. We'll see what we get. Very random at the edge. Another sheet of paper and pour it, pour it back in. And then I'm going to just let it cool for just a bit and resist touching it like I always want to do. Yeah, you like, is this dry? And stick your finger in it. So you can just see that. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And then I'm going to use a tape runner. Now notice I haven't even kind of auditioned where it's going to go. Um, by the way, um, the tape runner's used up. Oh, that mean the tape runner's used up? Nothing. You've broke it. <laughs> <laughs> Seth. It, you can sometimes if it's not empty, you can just keep rewinding it. What the what? <laughs> that one has this cover. On. Okay. There you go. Can you tell that I don't use tape runners at home? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it pulled the paper up. It looks like. Oh, don't do this at home. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Okay. No, success. <laughs> no, I, I, I think I've used the tape runner twice, and you know what? You can see why. All right. So I have an audition, so I need to kind of audition which way I want it to go, and I think I kind of want it to go right there. So I'm gonna layer it there. Um, and I think. Do you ever use your embossing powder like a distress pad all the way around the edges and put embossing powder around there? All the time! Did you want to see that? Can I show you something else? Sure. All right, so yes, what Lolly was talking about was this, which is you run it around the edge. I think you were talking about this. And then you put it, the powder, and then you melt it. And what's gorgeous about that is that it's a frame. It's again that whole border thing. Um, but what I'm gonna do is actually use a new product, and a different product. And that, excuse me. <coughs> oh, yeah. That's the um, mixed media embossing brush. So I'm going to give a shout out to last year's new product, <laughs> which is the mixed media um, conditioner and freestyle tool. And I'm actually going to take a second just to show you this, both of these on plain white, okay. just so you see what these are because they're inc they're incredible. I just think they're they're really cool. So we'll use this one. So you know when you have an ink pad you get reinkers and you take the reinker liquid and you pour it in and then you get a you know your fake credit card your hotel key um, a piece of uh, chipboard and you rub it and then that's what you do so with this this conditioner it's actually a ball tip and all you need to do is just run it on like that oh, and it has okay. the pressure and it releases but what else you can do is this genius amazing incredible thing are we ready, people? We're yeah. ready. Okay. Yay. So I can do that so that when I take, say, my space dust, actually, let's go to town even more. Let's just, just, let's just do it. You can kind of see what's happening, right? You can sort of see the color of it. turning lavender yep. from where I'm sitting. Yep. So you can then create 
I'll give you the reveal in a second. Something that looks like like that. Oh, that's cool. Um, now I know they're embossing. Hey, they're embossing pens out there, and they have a pen as well. There's something about the freedom of the ball tip that just allows you to do that. You can make these amazing dots. You can make great like edges. Mm -hmm. um, you can draw, write your name. It's so easy with just like a script, or if you're really good with text, to do something beautiful. And so then, you know, heating this, you get, you know, what I just think is beautiful. This one's uh, uh, the new space dust. So you see, it has some of the sort of purple magenta tones, and it has some of the really sort of interesting bluish teal tones. It has some clear crystals in it. It has some black. You can kind of see the, the color tone of it. It's sort of yeah, like teal a little bit. There. It's beautiful. And it's got the sheen. Yeah, it actually would go really yeah, well with your favorite. hair. Like seriously, like got to show everybody. Could you turn the camera, please? Oh, yeah, that would be dynamite <laughs> on jewelry. Pretty. Yeah. So I really like that see one. That. That's my favorite because it's got some lavender in it. Yes. So what what we what what I've now done is gone, you know, the uh, mixed media route. So now what we have is we have this with a brush. Um, so first thing to notice is that it's an open top. Well, so that means don't tip it. But what it really means is that you can use the liquid inside in all different ways. So certainly with the brush, you could do a brush stroke. And you can do these sort of beautiful lines that are really mixed media inconsistent. You can do your edge. Uh, I'll, show, I'll do this later. So I'm going to use that around the edge. Okay. You can make these really wonderful dots that are just very organic. You know, you can do whatever you can do with a brush. I love that, but I also love to use this liquid. So if you have a very textual powder, this powder holds it really well. If you put a good amount of this, you can really pour powder into it, and you can get this bubbling, really textual, crazy good mixed media surface. I stick a pencil, uh, the back of an old school pencil with the eraser in this, and then I make the dots with the eraser. Oh. I love, I'm not going to do it for this project because this is too elegant, I love to very slowly put a drop at the top and I do this and you get these beautiful drips. And because this, this is so thick, it's, it's really full on texture. So I'm going to just uh, show you another powder. Let's show you the crusty copper. Um, um, right there, with with what we have here, and I just love um, the idea of like a paint, uh, a paint stripe, like a brush stroke. And so sometimes when I'm trying to figure out what to add to my background, I love to see brush strokes. And because it's a mixed media oriented, it's they're inconsistent. You know, we want that. I want that. I don't want it to be perfect. And so when I heat the crusty copper, you see the beautiful shift in color. But see how, well, I'll show it to you uh, after I melt it all. You can see where, if you add more of the embossing ink from the embossing brush, how uh, it's just thicker and becomes almost like a medium rather than an embossing powder. And see, do you see, can you see it move? You know, I'm, I'm burning a little bit on purpose because I like that. But you also can do it if you go on the low, uh, the low speed and go slow, it won't burn. So, I don't know if you can see the thickness of that. I can, yes. Um, I, I, you might want to just, if you want to look, you can just pass it around. I, I really love that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. <laughs> I want you to remember that you have some control over this. So if you just take it out, the brush is going <coughs> to, whoops, I should use the white right lid. one now. White lid, white lid. You guys already took black. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So it's very thick. So if I want to do something that is going to be very textural and rich, I'm going to use it. But if I'm going to do an edge, I don't want it that, for me, I don't want it that thick. So I'm just going to make sure that, I, you know, just like we would do with anything, like peanut butter, you take a little bit off the spoon or the knife. Nail, nail, see, yeah, I don't know about that. Is that what you would do? You would take some off? Okay. Um, and I'm just going to go around the edge. And it's going to be really inconsistent, which is what I like. Um, it's going to be heavier where I started, and now it's going to be less. I can always go back and add more. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit. I'm going to cap it. This is almost more dangerous than this to spill. 
Um, and then I'm gonna find, I'm gonna go with something a little bit darker. I think I'm gonna go with Blue Moon. I think that would be a gorgeous contrast. Um, Blue Moon. Again, I'm gonna show you this. You see all the clear crystals in the top? You wanna make sure you shake that up. The clear crystals weigh less, so they migrate to the top. If you pour it now, you won't get a full-on Blue Moon. So I'm going to... I love the fact that you don't have to worry about, like, you could pour the whole jar out. Um, and you still get it all back. All right, let's just see what, what the edge looks like. Okay. Yeah, that was the whole jar. <laughs> Practically. Um, and then, okay, so let's just say, you know, this was really subtle because I went soft. I could have gone so much harder. So let's just say, oh no, look at that big blob. We don't like that big blob, right? This is going to ruin your art. Don't melt it because it's gone. This is where you go in with your brush and you just control it before you melt it and you get rid of what you don't want and soften it up. You can also, as I said earlier, if you weren't here, go in with thin all and you can really be specific. So theoretically, and in fact, let's just say I did a bit, let's, I, like, let's say I did this and I press this on here. Um, I could th and then pour, I could then pour my powder, and then I could go in with an awl, and I could write a name, I could draw a portrait, I can etch it out. Um, always remember that. But once you melt it, it's going nowhere. And then I'm gonna just that soft touch. So um, usually I add text and stuff to my pieces, um, but I'm just I think I'm gonna call that done. I don't know. This could, this could be a card front. Huh? Yeah, this could be a card front. Um, I never make cards on white because I'm a, I'm a big mess. So for me, when I do make cards, I don't make cards often, but I sometimes do. I always make them somewhere else, and then I cut it down to what I want. Um, so maybe, you know, a card like that would be good. And then I, w I probably would add a sentiment right there. Um, and the other thing to note is that if you're working on paper, sometimes when you add a lot of media, it does curl. You know, that curl can come out. And also, you can also, you know, put something heavy on it. But what I like to do with a lot of the paper is I like to mount it on bookboard, or I like to mount it on a little heavy chipboard, so that you end up getting not only does it not buckle, but you it's more substantial because it's on that board. So it just feels a little bit more significant to me. So yeah, that's 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 my new stuff, people. Yay! Thank, thank you, sir. Oh, you guys are sweet. Thank you for watching at home. If you have any questions about this or want to see more, you can go to WOW. Um, WOW has a, a UK site as well as a US site in terms of their stores. It's sold everywhere in the world. And you can get, you'll be able to get all my products if you like off yes. sethafter.com. Um, and if you have any questions about what you saw, feel free to email me or text me or message me or send something on Instagram or show up at my home. No. <laughs> no. Um, and I'll be happy to answer. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, guys. You,